The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Dramatized for radio in five parts by Melissa Murray. Part 4. Alexei Fyodorovich Karamazov to see you. What are you pretending to be? An English butler? Get out. This is my house. He is my servant. And we are all your servants. Sit down, Alyosha. I want to speak with you, Ivan. Katya. Are you going to order me from my own drawing room now? I need to talk to him. The trial is on Monday and I've only just heard that you have taken charge of Mitya's defence. I'm trying to save him. Of course you are. I didn't involve you with our plans. Because you wouldn't approve. He knew you wouldn't approve, but what other defence does he have? Only a madman would murder his father. The man we've hired, he is the best doctor in Moscow, the very best. He will convince the jury. Mitya didn't murder our father. Ivan, I would like to talk to you. I will leave if you insist that Mitya is my fiancé oh, still. Stay, by all means. She has a right to stay. She's paying all the bills. Lawyers, doctors, everyone's. All this despite the fact Mitya loves another. What a noble soul you are, Katerina Ivanovna. You see the way he speaks to me? I do. I don't mind it. I can bear anything. You interrupted us, Alyosha. We were in the midst of another, yet another discussion of Mitya. His ruin, his redemption. His redemption. How beautifully she speaks of that. The eloquence of her voice. A man could listen to her all night, all day, like a nightingale. What is it you want me to do? Tell me, you can't want me to abandon your brother now, at the hour of his need. How could I want that? No, of course I don't. I don't want to deprive you of your hour of glorious, humiliating shame when you stand in the witness box and reveal all the intimacies of your heart. Everyone's heart. Mine, even. Will you tell them that I love you? Will you tell them that you offered yourself to my brother as a holy act, of course, as a willing sacrifice? How can you say such things? How, how can you torment me? That was a long time ago, before all this. All our histories are like that now. Before the murder, after the murder. Alyosha, I will do anything to save Mitya. My other feelings have no effect on that, I swear it. You can trust me. Do you trust me? I trust you. I take my leave. An hour every morning in her company is my ration. More than that, I cannot endure. Oh, I wish. Don't make wishes. What's the point? This isn't a fairy tale. No one will end up living happily ever after. I've never seen him so agitated. So unhappy. Katerina. You see how it is for me. I am caught. Trapped. What a terrible dilemma. I talked a lot about noble sacrifice. About rescuing your poor brother, poor Dimitri, and, and yet it was all nonsense. I never meant a word of it. I like to say it. I like to feel my spirit stretched to some wonderful ideal. But now it is real ruin that faces him, real desolation. And all my words have come back to me. I don't love him. I love... But in honour, in truth, against the deepest impulses of my heart, I cannot, I cannot abandon Dimitri now, can I? You don't say anything. I don't know what to say. Do you think I'm still play-acting? Quite honestly, I think you probably are. <laughs> but, on the other hand, you're probably entirely sincere as well. You understand me. Excuse me. I must go. I must talk with Ivan. You took your time? What did she say to you? We must talk. Oh, indeed, we must. But why? Why is that all we do? Talk. Tell me this, little brother. Do you think a person can know, can actually experience going mad? I wonder about that, too. I hope it just happens like falling off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, suddenly. <laughs> but somehow I doubt it. Will we go out and get drunk? I have a letter for you from Lisa Cocker. Uh, she's another one, a slut. Well, I won't read it. You've gone white. What's the matter? 
You have some feeling for this girl. Really? And she sends you to give me a letter. <laughs> oh, they are magnificent. Ivan, what is the matter with you? Lisa's a child. Sixteen. A child. She's been ill, and if she has some feeling for you... For me? I know what that feeling is. She wants a racy little flirtation. You must have disappointed her, Alyosha. Good for you. Let's not speak of it. What does she say to you? Do you mean her or... Katerina. Of course, Katerina. Don't be stupid. I must ask you not to talk to me like that. <laughs> Why not? What'll you do? Fight a duel with me? Hit me over the head with something? Oh, tradition's important. Hmm? Let it be a blow to the head. Oh, Alyosha. I saw Mitya earlier. He told me about your plan, about escaping to America if it goes badly for him. He wasn't supposed to tell you. He doesn't want to do it. He'll allow you to use this doctor and to have your lawyer in the courts represent him. But that's all. If he is found guilty, he will endure his fate. Hmm. Very well. He knows that at the moment things do not look well for him. Ivan, listen! We must talk. He knows, everyone knows, the chances... There are no chances for him. They'll find him guilty. For the very simple reason, he is guilty. He's a monster. No. Between ourselves, we can say that. He's a monster who killed a monster. Uh, and you and me, me especially, what are we? Monsters. You didn't kill him. What? You didn't do it. Kill father. <laughs> is the boy delirious? Of course I didn't kill him. I was on the train to Moscow. Why did you go on the train that night? We were talking early that evening. You didn't tell me you were leaving. Uh, you actually think I, I will account for my movements to you? You were on a train to Moscow. I was drunk, asleep, in a chair in Grushenka's house. In Grushenka's house? Alyosha! I'm genuinely shocked. She wasn't there. Still? Yes. Why did you go on the train that night? I was lucky. Otherwise, who knows, they might have arrested me. They would certainly have suspected me. Oh, but Mitya is altogether a more satisfactory prisoner. With me, the whole affair would have taken on a political dimension. A guardian angel protected you and put you on that train. Oh, not an angel, I can assure you of that. Smedyakov. Thank you. Thank you? Why do you say that? You think I've told you something important? A man must be on his guard against you. Let me say it again. I had nothing to do with his death. When you're alone, you don't believe that. You don't believe it. You think you did it because you wanted to do it. It's the same thing, wanting to do something and doing uh, it. Is that what you think? Yes. I think that about myself. Oh, I thought you were the good one among us. Did you want him dead as well? Of course. The Karamazovs are all monsters. I should listen to myself. Do you see him? Have you seen him? Who? Ivan? What's the matter? Ah, I'm not a child. I'm not a peasant to see ghosts. But I've seen him. Father. Oh, my poor brother. Oh, you're very... Kind. Do you know what I'd like to do now, at this minute? Do you know what I feel about your pity? Let me tell you this. Katerina has a piece of paper that will prove mathematically that Dmitri did it. The murder. Uh, I mean logically, not mathematically. What do you say to that? I don't believe it. Oh, he doesn't believe it. Tell me this. What do you believe? Who do you think did kill our father, who art in hell, I hope? Who do you think did kill him? It had to be one of us. Us Karamazovs? Yes, I think so. Not Mitya? No. Not me? No. Nope. What are you saying? Are you saying that you did it? No. Do you still believe in God after all this? Yes. But perhaps he's not the God I imagined. I want nothing more to do with you. I want nothing more to do with you conscience or your god i will try to help meet you i gave katya up for him although he spits in her face oh she loves that i spit in her face now as well i spit venom i want her to suffer Ivan. don't touch me don't speak another word to me or i will strike you down i will strike you down go and see smerdjikov who smerdjikov He's ill. He's been ill since that night. 
What has he to do with this? Go and see him. Ask him. He will talk to you. If Smedjakov is that ill, why isn't he in a hospital? We tried to take him. Flung himself on the floor and had another fit. Terrible fit. Thought his throat would burst open with the screams. No one comes to see him. I myself come only every second day. His mother sees him. Perhaps I'd better not disturb him. And don't be afraid. He speaks of you. What does he say? He talks about you a lot. About me? Why? Hasn't Alyosha been to see him? Not once. He won't come near this side of the house. Smerdyakov is a scoundrel, a buffoon. But I'm glad that one of you has come to see my son. Forgive us. My mafia does my forgiving for me these days. Don't be afraid, Ivan Fyodorovich. Why would I be afraid? You're not infectious, are you? Epilepsy isn't like typhoid. Perhaps not. Of course not. I am an ill-educated man. I don't know what is infectious and what is not. Ask me, then. Ask you what? How you are? To be honest, I don't greatly care how you are. Did you know you have a little tick under your left eye when you are nervous? What is the point of this? Don't go. Don't go, (laughs) sir. You are meat and drink to me, sir. You are the Lord God of hosts, I swear it. Hosanna, Hosanna. You're delirious. It's true, though. You are my lodestone, sir. Why would I exaggerate now? Now that I'm dying. You're not dying. You're malingering. You've been in bed all these weeks. But keeping you... out of harm's way. And the police. They're not idiots for all we would wish them to be. They couldn't quite believe it was a coincidence that I had a fit. Not just an ordinary fit, but the king and queen of seizures. And knocked myself unconscious the very night your poor dad copped it. But they never broke me, sir. They never wavered me. I held up. Every time they asked me, I said the same thing, the same words. They brought doctors in. Your name was never mentioned by me, sir. And why would my name be mentioned by you? I never told them that I predicted it all to you. I told you the very night, before it happened, that I'd have a fit. The night I put you on the train. You can't predict fits, sir. A first-year student knows that. How could I know I was going to be ill? I even told you it'd be in the cellar, that I'd fall down the cellar steps and knock my head. You can see the scar, if you like. I don't want to look at the scar. You're having a hard enough job just looking at me at all, aren't you, Ivan Fyodorovich? I'm as handsome as any of you. And I got you on that train. Never forget that. I made sure you were safe. No one suspects you. What nonsense are you talking? Perhaps it's me that's delirious. I'm lying in a bed somewhere in the midst of the most fearful nightmare. I think that often. Do you suppose we're lying side by side? I could bear it better if we were lying side by side. Your head's hurting, isn't it? You're sweating. He comes to see me, you know. Who? What are you talking about? You know, him. Why me? You're as guilty as I am. You left him to his fate. You left knowing he'd be killed. That's why I told you about the fit, the cellar, to see how you'd react. To see if you wanted it to happen. If you wanted him dead. Are you admitting to me that you killed him? That's not the sort of thing a sane man, an intelligent man, would admit. Except under torture. But I would admit anything you like if you tortured me. Would you like to torture me? Sir. You're an 
insect. Vile, crawling thing. If another man were to say that to me, I might smile. But I'd plot a little bit of vengeance for it. You, I forgive. I forgive utterly with both hands and a full heart. You wanted him dead. He is dead. Don't ask for more. Poor Dimitri. Do you mind if I call him Dimitri? I should call him Dmitri Fyodorovich, but somehow I don't want to. How he must hate prison. How he must hate it. He despised me. I despised me. But you... I despise you as well, believe me. Yes, but I was of use to you. We all crave to be of use. I'm a worker and a peasant, sir. Salt of the earth, son of this Russian earth, and son, illegitimate son of the village idiot. I know my pedigree. I know it. I'll go and tell the police. I will. Do that. I don't mind what you do as long as you're happy. Long ago I decided to love you. To love you like a brother. What will they say when you tell them, I wonder? When you tell them everything... Will you tell them that there is no God and because there is no God, all things are permissible? What? You said that to me once. I didn't. Take a drink of water, sir. You were discussing philosophy with your house servant. He was in awe of you, the educated Moscow man. Might I say something to you, Ivan Fyodorovich? It seems I have no choice but to listen to you. Now that it is all permissible, I, who have been the subject of your experiment, come back to report to my master. I'm not your master. Have strength. Have pity. Listen to me. Now I've done the thing. If I did it, I admit nothing. But now it's done. I discover this beautiful fact. If it is all permissible, then equally it is all meaningless. I am endlessly eating that dead thought, and it is endlessly eating me, remorselessly. But there is no remorse in me. Or in my conscience. Do you know what that feels like? Do you, sir? Speak. I wanted him dead. He read my heart. You were my instrument. I admit it. I had reasons of my own as well. I had more courage than all of you. Than all the Karamazovs. I alone dared to do what you all dreamed of. And what a nice nightmare I've landed you all in. <laughs> Off already? I've more to tell you. Details. But you don't look well. Perhaps I was infectious after all. Come back soon. And tell Mafia I'd like pancakes for lunch. Oh, I caught something. Absolutely caught something. Mm, ill. Fever. Oh, my forehead. Shit. Ringing wet. I'll just lie down for ten minutes. Five minutes. Then I'll go to the police. How did I get back to my lodgings? Oh, devil only knows. You walked. Most people thought you were drunk. What'll I say to the police, though? What'll they think? I've no evidence that Smetchikov did it. They might think the whole thing's a plot to save Mitya. They might. And Smetchikov as good as told me he'd implicate me in the plot to m murder, to f f f kill. You are implicated. You're the sleeping partner. I'll be better when I've had a sleep. My head's like an engine, like a furnace. Do you have something for me? What would I have for you? 
Madsen. Madsen? <laughs> <laughs> Why would you imagine that? There's something to make me better. I can't lie here sick. I have things to do. Oh, you have to help me, Doctor. You think I'm a doctor? Oh, I see why. My brown jacket. And for some reason you associate brown jackets with doctors. Intriguing. If you're not a doctor, who the devil are you? The devil. <laughs> Don't talk nonsense. I must, if I'm to be understood by the likes of you. I'm hallucinating again. You have such a bad conscience, it's a pleasure to be around. Twist and turn, twist and turn. Trust me, I am the devil, fleshed out by you and wearing this rather unattractive brown jacket. If you are, you're a mere figment of my imagination. I object to mere. Of course, the way I look is entirely your responsibility, but I am more than mere appearance. Ask Alyosha. Don't speak of him, leave him alone. He's losing his faith, you know. But he still believes in me. Bless him. One day, you never know, I might count him as one of my own. He's an idealist, like yourself, but he has better manners. Would you like to talk to your father? Oh, no. He's eager to speak with you, eager as anything, keen as mustard. I don't believe in you. Never mind. I believe in you. These things don't have to be reciprocal. Like love. Oh, what do you want with me? What do you want with me? You imagined me. For an atheist, you're awfully obsessed by all this religious hogwash. The devil doesn't use words like that. I have no dignity. <laughs> Sad, but true. I'm going to think about something else. It's a shame you won't pray to God. I'm curious about him. Does he really exist? <gasps> Perhaps he might appear. You'd have a thrilling religious experience and turn into a little saint. Poor Alyosha would be jealous. You'd like that. If you mention Alyosha again, I will kill you. There's one of you in prison? Oh, he has the funniest ideas, Mitya. He thinks that suffering will redeem him, that Siberia will somehow set him free. The fool. I enjoy him. And you, of course, I like you. I love you. Such cruelty, such coldness, such malice. Yes. I have all of those things. Cruel, cold, malicious, lustful. There's a cure for it all, you know. My patent medicine. A nice little knife, a tight little rope, a lead bullet buried deep into the brain and then Perfect peace. And then who would you have to torment? Dear boy, you breed like bacteria. Do you have such a thing as a cigar or a drop of something? It's a cold night. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Don't apologise. Under no circumstances apologise. I never have, and look what happened to me. Prince of the world. Would you like that? Would you like me to tempt you? I'm ill, aren't I? Very ill. He has more courage than you. Who? Poor Smerdyakov. There he goes now. Dingle, dangle. Oh, what do you mean? Will I stroke your head? Will I comfort you? Would you like me to sing you a lullaby? Will I get your mother here and make her sing for you? Oh, leave her in peace. Poor dead dear. What a life she had. What a life she had with your father. How she despaired. That's the worst sin of all, they tell me. Oh, I don't want her here. What have you to do with my mother? Leave her alone. For pity's sake, leave her alone. Can you hear me? I won't listen to you, I won't. Oh, go away. For God's sake, go away. I can't, Ivan, you have to listen to me. Here, drink this. 
Are you all right? I'll send for a doctor. Oh, no, no doctor. Did you hear her? Who? Mother. Oh, mother. She was singing to me. I don't remember her voice. Stay with me a while. Don't let him come back. Ivan, there is something I must tell you. Oh, is it morning? Can't be. They found Smerdyakov. What do you mean? Poor Grigory found him and sent for me. Smerdyakov has hung himself. There's a letter in his pocket addressed to you. No, 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 rest. You need... We have to get the letter. We have to open it before the police get there. Come on. Come in, masters. Come in. Uh, I'm very sorry. I don't know what to say. Say nothing. He loved the way you talked. He used to write down the things you said in a notebook. Come and see him. Don't worry, I've cut him down like one of the winter hams. My boy. I won't come in. My mafia will want to get in and wash him soon. Have you sent for the police? I sent for you. This is your house. This is your affair. Go in. He looks ugly, but you'll forgive him that. Before we go into that room, there's something I must ask you. I'd rather get this over with. Then we can talk. Ivan? I shouldn't have let you come. How do you feel? Uh, a little light-headed. The devil paid me a visit last night, Alyosha, just before you came. I'll go in on my own. I'll get the letter. Sit here. He told me you were losing your faith. Is that true? Is this the right time for this conversation? Yes. The elder sent me out into the world to help. To help my family. To prevent a disaster. Well, I haven't succeeded. My father's dead. My brother on trial for his murder. And now, smudge your What about me? Am I unscathed? Don't you pity me and what I've become? What have you become? The way I treat Katerina. The way I spoke of poor Lisa. It reminded me of him. I am worse than my father. I'm a clever man, Alyosha. The cleverest of all the Karamazovs. Look what I've done. Smerdyakov. Tell me, do you love this Lisa? I'd like to. I might have done, but now... Why can't you love her? What's your sin, Alyosha? Spiritual pride. I wanted to be a good man. That above anything, above anyone. We must go in the room now. Wait. Wait. When I spoke to Smerdyakov, he told me. He told me he had killed our father. He actually said it? Yes. In so many words, yes. You knew it, didn't you? That's why you sent me to him. Why didn't you go yourself? He wouldn't have spoken to me. And why do you think he spoke to me? Let's go in and do what we must. He did it for my sake. That's what he said. Or under my influence. He made sure I went on the train to Moscow that night so that no one would suspect me. But I should have. I should have suspected me. I should have suspected him. I did. I knew. I could have stopped him. I didn't. It's a hard choice for you now. Do you want to sacrifice one brother for the sake of another? I'll confess. Don't worry. I will confess. Ivan, you are not a murderer. Let's go in. Oh. Oh. Where's the letter? I don't know. Open the window. Mm. Don't look at his face. Uh, didn't Grigori tell you where it was? He said he found it in his pocket. Perhaps it's still there. Uh, I'll have a look. No, I'll do that. Please. Oh. It isn't here. Is there nothing one can do about his face? After a while it will look 
different, more relaxed. Oh, what a happy thought. After the hard struggle of life, there's a brief interlude in which we are permitted by bountiful nature to relax before we rot. I found it. He seems to be doing that already. It's addressed to you. Good God. Is there no note? Nothing. Just money. Just a handful of dirty notes, not silver coins, no symbolism. How much is there? You know as well as I. 3,000 rubles. The money father had ready for Grushenka. He stole it. It's to prove to us that he killed our father. Well, give it to me. It's no use. There's no note. No explanation. If we take it to the police, they'll think the money's ours. That we're slandering a dead man to save our brother. That's what I'd think. Taunting us. Smedjikov was a bastard. Yes. We know the truth. But they will still find Mitya guilty. Yes. The devil told me this would happen. Let's get out. He hinted at this. He told me Smerjakov would hang himself. I should learn to trust him. There's no point in telling me not to come in. Oh. I'll give you one minute to get dressed. Come in now if you like. You're already up. No, I see you never went to bed. Oh, this is a dreadful business. Oh, could you keep your voice down a little? I've only just got him to sleep. Who? Ivan. Oh. He has a fever. You know the front door of your house is wide open. I just marched in. Um, is there something you wanted, Mrs Cocklecove? I would not have intruded today of all days, the first day of the trial. Now, is it true that Smerdyakov hanged himself? I have told Lisa nothing, and you mustn't say a word to her about it. We're all having nightmares. He played the guitar, apparently, Smerdyakov. Ludicrous for a man in his station in life. Still... Suicide, it's a dreadful thing. I had to come, Alexei. Oh, don't look at me that way. She said she would come by herself. She would roll herself down the street in her wheelchair and scream under your window until you came down to talk to her. She would have done it too. We both know that. She must speak with you. She's downstairs. Wait here with him until I come back. If he asks, tell him that the doctor won't come. Promise me that. Well, doesn't he like doctors? They make him nervous. Oh, I had an aunt like that. Her leg was the size of a mountain, but still she... What time is it? Two more hours. Yes. It will be a relief when it starts. What will he plead? You must be brave. Now, go downstairs and be kind to my Lisa. Mm. Stay with him. Don't let him come to the courthouse. Tell him I said he was to stay here. But then I'll miss it. I'll miss everything. Do this for me. You're a kind woman. Oh, I wish I wasn't. Lisa? Lisa, where are you? Lisa! Here I am, behind the door. Standing up. I was going to jump out and surprise you. You must help me walk back to my chair. Yes. Of you took too long. I'm tired. I won't be able to walk without help now. All right. Not that arm. Oops. This one. Thank you much. Okay. Are you angry with me? No. That's because you don't care about me. If you cared about me at all, you'd be furious. Playing hide and seek at a time like this. I would like nothing better than to play a nice game of hide and seek at the moment. Is he still in the house? The dead man. It's very gloomy in here. Let's go out onto the veranda and listen to the birds sing. Mother thinks I know nothing about it, but of course I do. Did you see the body? Yes. Was his tongue sticking out? No, he was... Did he smell? A little, perhaps. Not as badly as that precious elder of yours? No. The one you loved? The one who loved you? The one who prayed for you? Yes, he did that. But I still can't walk properly. You're better than you were. You're not, though. You look perfectly ordinary now in that <sighs> waistcoat. I can't imagine you in those monk's robes anymore. It's a shame. Did you give Ivan my letter? Ivan is ill. Did you? He tore it up without reading it. Did he? Yes. 
He's very handsome. Mm. Are you in love with him now? No. I was never in love with him. Darling Catcher flits from one to the other of you, Karamasov, so I thought, why not? Aren't I a woman too? Nearly. Weren't you even a bit jealous? It would have been nice to marry you. It's not impossible that we would have been happy. I do love you. In a large, meaningless way. In the way God loves us all. It's not enough. What's wrong with you, Alyosha? Change the subject. Have the decency to change the subject. Tell me something shocking. I will, if you like. Yes. What? Yes? Smerdyakov killed my father. How very convenient. Is that what you're going to say in court? It's the truth. It may be, but it's awfully convenient as well. Did he leave a letter confessing? Oh, he did. Show me, I must read it. Not a note, an envelope. An envelope with 3,000 rubles in it. I see. It's the money my father had in his room ready for Grushenka. Yes, I know. Do you really like that Grushenka? Would you like her to wash your feet with her perfumed hair? Like Mary Magdalene? He left the money so that we would know he did it. We would know, but no one would believe us. We can't use it in court to save Mitya. No, I, I see that. Why did he kill your father? Is that the question? No. The real question is why did he kill himself? Some people might suspect him, but Dmitri is the one standing trial. He'd got away with it. He committed a terrible crime. Better to be condemned as Mitya will be, by the world than by one's own conscience. Is it? If one had got away with it... Ah, it was the worst crime in the world. Unendurable. Read this. Re read what? You said there wasn't a note, only this money. Read the envelope. To my brother Ivan. Do you see? To my brother Ivan. He was our brother. Ivan's brother and mine and Mitya's. My God. His mother was the village idiot. No one knew how she became pregnant, who the impregnator was. Grigori took his master's bastard and raised him. Your father slept with the village idiot. With relish, I should imagine. It was the kind of thing he liked to do, to outrage his own sensibilities. <sighs> I shouldn't talk of that to you. The innocent virgin. Alyosha, are you sure of this? One of the monks in the monastery hinted it to me, months ago. One of those that hated the elder. Now, I thought it was just malice. I wanted to think that. But it was true. He is our brother. Was. I've told no one of this. You expect me to be discreet? Mm, for a while. But the trial, Dimitri... How do I prove any of this? The world wants Dimitri found guilty. Dimitri does himself. And poor Ivan, he's half mad with shame. I'm a boy! Who listened to a boy willing to say anything to save his brothers? And the fact is, I am willing to say anything. I'd say all of this even if it wasn't true. God wants both the guilty and the innocent to suffer in order to be redeemed. Oh. There are times, frankly, when I get sick and tired of people talking about God, redemption and all that stuff. Let's listen to the birds sing then. Let us be quiet a moment. Push on, push on, where we are? They'll be starting soon. There's nothing to be going shoving. Look at it. Seats in there are going for ten rubles. Proper theatre prices. Moscow theatre. Ten rubles? But fifteen for front row. But mind yourself, if you fall, you'll be trampled. Hey, I think they've started! Prisoner at the bar, do you understand the indictment? Have you read it and examined it? Certainly, certainly. Prisoner at the bar, do you plead guilty or not guilty? I am guilty of many things. Depravity, drunkenness, and the most terrible thoughts. I wanted him dead. I admit that, frankly. Oh, 
You should be ashamed of yourselves coming to watch this, to gloat at me. You should be ashamed. You're right. You're right. I won't be provoked. Oh, this damn collar. It's too tight. I'm sorry, Your Honour. They have me dressed like a doll. Why the devil am I wearing these gloves? You're going to reprimand me, Judge. Quite rightly. There's no need. I hate being reprimanded. To the indictment, the prisoner at the bar declares on his oath, on his word of honour, that he is not guilty. I am not guilty of the murder, of the theft. Dmitry Fyodorovich is a scoundrel, but he is not a thief. He is not a murderer, no. We will proceed with the evidence of the witnesses. It is the understanding of this court that one of the witnesses took his own life last night. The servant, Smedjakov, will not appear. He's dead? Smedjakov? Hug himself! To a dog, the death of a dog. I am Mr. Fetukovich, Dmitry Fyodorovich's lawyer, and it is my turn to ask you questions. Do you understand? I understand. Let me first express my sympathies for the tragic death of your son. Let's get on with it. She wants me home. His mother. I will indeed uh, get on with it. How many glasses had you drunk on the night of the murder before you were struck by an unknown assailant? I'd had a glass. A single glass? Good. Uh, vodka or raw spirit? I brew it myself. Still, a single glass, even of the strongest home brew, won't befuddle a man too much. One glass. Maybe I had more. So, you were asleep, drunk, you heard a noise and rushed into the garden. It was dark. Somehow you noticed your master's private door to the outside was open. Uh, you told the police that, didn't you? I saw it. It was open. How is your eyesight, by the way? Can you see how many fingers I'm holding up? God gave us all the same numbers of fingers, rich and poor alike. <laughs> Bravo, Gregory. Good and faithful servant. Don't let this dirty lawyer upset you. You speak out. My client is distraught, Your Honour. I am not. Stop harrying, Grigori. If you are my lawyer, then I order you to stop. Uh, don't look at Katerina Ivanovna. She may pay the bills, but I am the one on trial. Not her. You obey me, villain. <laughs> Dmitry Fyodorovich, yes. it is this man's evidence that he saw you coming from inside the house after murdering your father. Oh. Do you understand? Yes. I must destroy his credibility. I must. No, Grigori, you are dismissed. I go home, mourn for your son. Pray for me. I'll tell Mafia to pray for you. I won't do it. Can I go then? You may be recalled at a later date. You can go. Let me warn you, Mr. Karamazov. I won't test your patience again, Your Honour. It was my intention to call Ivan Fyodorovich, my client's brother, next, but I have been informed he is indisposed. Very ill, in fact. What's wrong with Ivan? <laughs> Alyosha! I would be very happy to give my evidence next. It's the doctor, is it? Buffoon. <laughs> number of symptoms that allow one to reach the ineluctable conclusion that Dmitry Fyodorovich performed the actions on the night in question in a state of separation from his moral being. He has no recollection of the events because he, the conscious man, was not there. Are you saying he was possessed? On the contrary, dispossessed. See, Judge, it's nonsense. Nonsense. I am not a golem, sir. I am a man, like you are. Go back to Moscow. Go back to Berlin. Of course, initially, the patient always rejects the diagnosis. He's not the only one. <laughs> Lunch, I think. You must answer the question. He told me. I knew he was very angry with father. He had reason to be, good reason. And he threatened to kill your father, yes? You must answer me. He didn't mean it. But you admit he said it. Well, he was provoked, very provoked. And at the time he said it, did you think he was bluffing or joking, or did you think he meant it? I think he believed he meant it. And perhaps I did as well, at the time. You thought him capable of murdering his father, your father? Yes. But he didn't do it, I know that. You know that? How? Because I know who did kill my father. It was our house servant, Smerdyakov. I see. 
It is the truth. It's easy for men of our class to accuse the servants of all kinds of misdemeanours, but this is murder. We must have proof. What is your proof, Alexei Fyodorovich? I'm afraid I have no proof. None that a court of law would accept. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Karamazov. Your loyalty to your brother does you credit. Judge, you must believe me. I swear to this before God. Ayosha, you are a saint. I am a sinner. Don't be upset. No one can save me. Who would want to? Send me to Siberia this instant. They can't shut old Meteor up, can they? I heard that Smirchikov cut his throat and wrote out his confession in his own blood. Well, maybe he had help cutting yeah, it. maybe. Those Karamazovs, they're capable of anything. Hey, it's a, that's the beauty, the fiancé. I considered the 3,000 rubles I gave to Dmitri Fyodorovich to be a loan. No, no, you, you gave him the money to send to your sister. He stole it. You've said this yourself in public, in front of witnesses on many occasions. It was a loan, and one that I'm certain Dmitri would have repaid. And if he had not, it is no one's business how matters of that kind stand between me and my husband. Your husband? I am vowed to him. We are married in the eyes of God. I will say now as well that never, never once in my presence did he threaten to harm his father in any way, despite his father's terrible treatment of him. Thank you, madam. Perhaps this court will hear things about my fiancé, my husband, private matters involving people, females. Let me say... Let me make clear now before the court that I, of course, and absolutely forgive and will forever forgive him. I forgive him for his indiscretions. Oh. Yes, I do. I am not ashamed. I am your wife. If your honour would call for a priest, I would marry him now. Knowing all I know, knowing everything, he is innocent of the crime of murder and I will prove it with my own body. Would I offer my hand to a killer? For the love of God, will you be quiet? Yes. Yes, I will. Thank you. I have spoken. What kind of a question is that? I'm merely asking if you're dressed in black, uh, very fetchingly in black, because you're mourning the death of your patron, Fyodor Karamazov. He was not my patron, whatever that means. And no, I am not in mourning for him. He was not your patron. Would you prefer the word protector, then? Talk as you like. Use whatever words you wish. If you mean... Did I have relations with him? No, I did not. He pestered me. He wanted me. But I don't sleep with every man who asks me. I don't wish to embarrass you. Oh, you do. That is your dearest wish. And tonight you will smoke your cigar with a smirk on your face, thinking of how you humiliated me. God protect me. Oh, it's a pig. It's a complete pig. I am to blame. I am to blame for it all. I drove them mad, both of them. You would understand that, the pleasure of tormenting those in your power. Yes, I did that. I am ashamed of that. Those are matters for your conscience, not this court. If the court is not interested in these matters, in justice, in honour and truth, then the court should be ashamed of itself. Bravo, my darling. Oh, I love you. Did you hear that, Miss Katya? I see you've got yourself a ringside seat and a nice lace hanky. Weep away! No one is paying any attention to you. You must not insult the other witnesses, madam. Oh, she's my sister. Yes, she is. Aren't you, dear one? She begged me to give her her man back, but he was not hers. He pitied her. I pity her. Do you hear? I pity you. To move on, I have two questions. Can you repeat to the judge, uh, to us all, what you said when Dmitri Fyodorovich was arrested? No, I can't. I can't remember. Ah. You shouted out, send us both to Siberia. We're both guilty of this crime. Did you say that? It certainly sounds like an outburst I might make. Yes, I will admit to it if you like. Clearly, then, at that moment, you believed him guilty of the murder. You felt some sense of responsibility, quite rightly, quite rightly, given your behaviour. And you cried out that you too wished to suffer the consequence of your sins. Are you enjoying yourself, 
saying that to me. You believed at that moment that he was guilty. You believed it then, and I venture to suggest that you believe it now. No, I don't. I will not be crushed by you, Mr. Prosecutor. I cried out that we were as guilty as one another, my meteor and I. He is mine for all the lace hankies in the world. Yes, we are guilty, as guilty as one another. Exactly. So that must mean, as I am innocent of this murder, that he also is innocent. That is what I said. That is what I meant. Make way! Make way! Oh. I'm here at last. I couldn't find a comb, Your Honor. You're ill. You're too ill to be here. Let me explain to the judge. Who are you? It's me, Alyosha. No, you're an imposter. My brother's a monk. I've left the monastery. What is going on, please? Um, I'm here to give my evidence. If it's so, please, your gracious majesty. Uh, uh, I'm joking. I, I, I'm joking. Uh, l- l- look, ask me anything. Ask me what you like. Um, oh, how can I have a glass of water? If someone would give me a He's glass. He's going to faint. No, no, I'm not. I'm not going to faint. I'm going to tell the truth. I must tell you the truth. My evidence is important. What is it you have to say, sir? Uh, Are you wasting the court's time? He's ill, Your Honour. Perhaps tomorrow, my No, no, no. No better today. My father was alive some weeks ago and then he died. Smedjakov was alive yesterday. He's dead today. In fact, we'd better hurry. Who knows how long I have. Do you have anything in particular to tell the court about the matter? The tragic murder of your dear father? The tragic murder of... Your Honour, you can see he doesn't know what he's saying. He hardly knows where he is. I know where I am. I know who's on trial here. We are princes, my brothers and I. Princes. We are living in a fairy tale. Absolutely in a fairy tale. Once you understand that, everything's clear. There were three brothers who lived in a land in the grip of an evil king. Dimitri. (laughs) is the eldest brother, the bluff, impulsive one, brave, a fighter. Oh, but he's not the giant killer. In all the stories, it's the youngest son, the good boy who's kind to animals, whom everyone loves, who kills the monster and sets us all free. But Alyosha, (laughs) he's innocent. He's not the hero of this story. I am. It's me. What are you saying? I have the money. I have the 3,000 rubles that were stolen from my father's room the night he was killed. Bailiff, take them. You are saying this is the money? How did you come by it? It was left to me by Smerdjakov. He killed my father, and last night he killed himself. We have heard this story before. Did he leave a note, a confession? He left the money. It was a message to me. The envelope was addressed to me. Uh, Strange thing is, I I, I can't find it. Uh, Alyosha, do you have the envelope? He was with me, Your Honour. He will verify every word I say, but but all all this is beside the point. It's nonsense. Yeah, I agree with you. It's nonsense. Because, of course, it wasn't Smedjakov who killed my father. It was me. It was me! The middle prince, the clever one, the sly one, huh? Who's in love with a beautiful witch and has no honour. No honour, that's me. Smedjakov was an instrument, that's all. An instrument in my hands. I put him to work. Is there a man in the room who has not desired the death of his father, huh? I desired it. Oh, how I desired it. He doesn't know what he's saying. You are overwrought. Look at them. Look at them enjoying all this. Uh, I like Nero. I love Nero. If the mob had one head, I would strike it off. I pretended I loved you, you you, you rubble. I wrote such lovely words about you, about your essential goodness, about how one day noble men would lift you from the mire and you would be as gods. You are beasts. You're fit for an avatar and nothing else. Do you hear me? This is madness. I won't let you do this. I won't let you sacrifice yourself. I confess before God that I killed my father. Take this young man and arrest him. You had better do that. Oh, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my cancer. What's happening? Why have they arrested Ivan? He's innocent. It's that thug that's the murderer. Thug! A 
thought Dimitri was your husband. I thought your ladyship was vowed to him before God. Don't you address me. Don't even speak Katerina, to me. Katerina, I beg you, sit down. Sit down and be calm. We can't allow this to happen. Help me, Alexei. The judge will take no notice of what Ivan says. He's ill. Anyone can see he's ill. Please, Katya, you will make matters worse. Ivan, Ivan, I will save you. It's here in my pocket. What? The letter. The letter from Dimitri that proves he's guilty. I held it in my hand as I stood and lied for him earlier. I perjured myself for him. Now I will tell the truth. Prosecutor, whatever your name is. Madam? I must speak with you. What is our little Tsarina up to now? Your Honor, I must speak. I must be heard. Recall me to the witness box. I have the proof, the incontrovertible proof that Dmitri Fyodorovich is guilty of the murder of his father. I have it here in his own hand in black and white. A full confession. Bitch. In episode four of The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Dmitri Karamazov was played by Paul Hilton, Ivan, Nicholas Bolton, Alyosha, Karl Prekop, Katerina, Juliet Aubrey, Grushenka, Katie Kavanagh, and The Devil by Sam Dale. Lisa was Emma Noakes, Mrs. Koklakova, Rachel Atkins, Smyadjokov, Joseph Kloska, Grigori, Desmond McNamara, The Judge, Ian Masters, The Prosecutor, Philip Fox, and Fetchikovich by Mark Straker. The bystanders were Paul Richard Biggin and Saiket Ahmed, and the spectators, Bethan Walker and Miranda Keeling. The Brothers Karamazov was dramatized for radio by Melissa Murray, original music by David Pickvance, and the directors were Mark Beebe and Colin Guthrie.